Agriculture and food production are right at the top of the global agenda as we head deeper into the 21st century. The issue demands that we look ahead, not 10 years, but 50, in our search for sustainable solutions to feeding the planet. With 150 years' experience in the sector, Bayer is well positioned for the task, getting involved in all aspects, from the role of climate change to rethinking our management of the soil around the world. I'm here in Davos to speak to Liam Condon, president of Bayer AG's Crop Science Division. Liam, good to talk to you. Obviously, this is the most important part of Bayer's work. That goes without saying because food production is a recognised potential crisis and therefore essential to the planet. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, Andrew. I mean, the great thing about food is everybody loves it. Um, a challenge that we face is that not many people know how food is actually produced. And I think the single biggest challenge that humanity is actually facing and all of us should really be concerned about is how are we going to feed 10 billion people by 2050 without starving the planet? And with the consumers as well. And with the consumers as well, because the consumers, particularly the millennials, they're super interested in not only how their food tastes, but actually as well, how was it produced? Where did it come from? Well, how big is your corporate footprint on all this? Well, we're the, the global leader in, in agriculture, so in essence, food production. Um, we're the number one company in all key crops. Um, we're the biggest innovation uh, company in the space in agriculture. We spend twice as much on research and development as our next competitor. Um, we're in 130 com uh, countries around the world. So we have a very big footprint and a very big ability to influence how food is produced worldwide. Now, people outside the sector, they use terms or they're familiar with terms like mass agriculture and factory farming and this idea of things on a grand scale. But actually there's nothing more local than agriculture. Farming is very personal to cultures and areas. I mean, how closely do you work with policymakers and NGOs on the ground? I think there is a big misperception out there that somehow food is produced on, on a mass, massive scale. The vast majority, well over 90% of all farmers worldwide, are actually very small on very small farms. So we're a big international company, but all of our customers at the end of the day are all local and very often very small farmers. And of course, in that relationship, the one advantage you have is, I suppose, you have the, the big picture. I mean, let's look at Brazil, for example, a production of soya. That's about getting protein out into the world for various reasons. Yeah. There's policy involved in that. There's how local economies function in that. You may have a, an idea of how that works, but the local structure doesn't necessarily support that. I mean, how much of your work is diplomatic on that level? It is very important for us to engage also with local governments, with regulators. At the end of the day, local governments decide what are the rules of the game, um, how is food to be produced in a certain jurisdiction, and we have to play by those rules. We give input um, to those regulators, we tell them what the practical consequences are of the decisions that they're taking, and then it's up to them to set the rules as they play. If you take the example of Brazil, I think it's, it's a nice example, there's a lot of concern today in Europe about what's happening, for example, with the Amazon forest, and that perhaps agriculture is leading to more forests being, uh, being destroyed, and with that biodiversity being destroyed in Brazil. Um, in actual fact, through our innovation, the products that we have, we can produce more on less land, so we don't need deforestation to be happening. Soil management is crucial in all this, isn't it? Soil management is, is key. At the end of the day, everything that's grown, it's grown from the earth um, that's available. And I think what a lot of people don't understand, the earth is it's a living organism. Uh, it's not something that's completely inert. There are living organisms in there, a lot of microbes, a lot of bacteria, a lot of fungi. So it's really important to keep that soil fertile. And that's exactly what farmers' biggest interest is. They live off the land. They need the soil to be as healthy as possible. And going back to Bayer's footprint in all this, we're talking about Africa, we're talking about South America, we're talking about Europe. All these different parts of the globe have different priorities, different dynamics. I mean, how does Bayer stay on top of all those different sciences? I think that's the interesting thing as a global company. You get to see the entire world, but you quickly realise that business everywhere is extremely local. As you say, if it's a, a smallholder farmer in Africa, in Rwanda, has very different needs than a large-scale farmer, farmer in Brazil. Um, 
However, the, the essence of what they're doing, the challenges that they're facing, although they're locally quite unique, the key decisions that they need to make are actually very similar. We've mapped out 40 key decisions that every farmer needs to make all over the world. And we've built algorithms that will help farmers take the right decisions at the right times. And that's where your data capabilities come in. So we, we have the world's most advanced digital agricultural platform. And this is all about using data to help farmers take smarter decisions. Farmers have inevitably, over generations, they've gotten a lot of knowledge, a lot of know-how, but they base often their decisions on what they knew from the past and uh, what they've learned from their own parents, but not necessarily taking real-time decisions based on what's going on in the farm right now and taking into account the fast pace of climate change. So we can help them with database solutions to take to take decisions in real time that will ultimately help them improve their yield and with that their sustainability footprint as well. I was going to ask about climate change because of course how much of the, how much of the climate crisis and the implications of that is, is built into your, your planning and your foresight for the future? Yeah, I think um, we have to acknowledge that agriculture, food production is today clearly a part of the problem of climate change because a lot of greenhouse gas emissions come from, from agriculture. 70% um, of fresh water used worldwide is actually used for agricultural purposes. Um, we believe that agriculture can actually be done in a carbon zero manner with the right science and technology um, used. Um, and with that, um, uh, agriculture can actually become part of the solution to climate change, for example, by sequestering carbon from the atmosphere into soil. That's a big task. I mean, can you be optimistic? Can we be optimistic about the, the long-term future, do you think, for food production? I, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the long-term future because I think for the first time in history, we can actually decouple productivity and sustainability. There has in the past, it, it has clearly been a perception, and I, th I think it's been a true perception, that there's an inverse correlation between productivity on the one side increasing and sustainability impact on the environment. With science and technolo technological advances nowadays, we can actually decouple productivity and sustainability so that we can increase both at the same time. We can produce more using less land, less inputs, and have a lower environmental impact than in the past. Well, we might hold you to it. Liam, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.